Hey everyone, Tim from PoolProAnswers.com here. Hey, real quick, I just want to show you all how to replace a motor on a pump. Now, it's more or less a universal uh, transaction, so to speak. Uh, there are different styles of pumps. This is a, a whisper flow as a square flange motor, uh, but it'll work with any, any type of motor uh, and, and pump combo. I just want to show you the basics. This is my uh, personal pump that I use for doing uh, vac to waste on a uh, on customer's project. Uh, so this is, this is a good opportunity for me to uh, do it for you all. So once again, this is a Pentair Whisperflow two-speed pump and motor. You can see the motor has been changed out once before, so I'm changing it back to a single-speed one-horsepower motor. All right, so the first thing you're going to want to do is uh, it seems like you're going to want to take uh, split the pump in half first but if you have access to these uh, bolts that are on your uh, motor that are holding your motor to the uh, volute um, you want to break those loose first do yourself a favor because in your scenario it's going to the plumbing is going to be holding all this rigid so you can break these four loose in a much easier way when it's all still attached uh, to the to the pump uh, so break these four loose first if your pump is this type of style. Some have the style where these are on the inside and you have no choice but to pull them off uh, to break them loose once everything's separated. But if it's if it's this style, take these four uh, off first. And most pumps, most most pump motor combos, you're going to need a 9 16th socket or a half inch socket or 7 16th socket. It's usually one of those three. I haven't run into many where I couldn't take everything apart with a half inch and or a 916 socket. Um, in your scenario, make sure your power is off at the breaker and make sure it's secure. That's your safety tip for the day. So now we're taking off and spinning spin the pump. You might be able to tell I had to switch switch motors on you. Um, this one here, one of the bolts was frozen. Um, in the field, I would take more drastic measures to get it off. Uh, but here's just for demonstration purposes uh, and for my own personal use, not for a customer. Uh, so thankfully, I have another pump, almost the exact same pump, just a different uh, horsepower range, same flange and everything. I'll be able to use that uh, instead on my on my personal pump. So, you can see on this one, we got all the bolts, uh, see, can you see it? Yeah. We got all the bolts taken out. The next step is to uh, take this diverter off. Diverter. And if you don't have a set of these, uh, so the next step, you need to take these little Allen sockets out. Make sure you have the uh, a full Allen set. I think this is like 532nd size. I don't know if you can see that very well. I'm kind of running out of daylight here. That's what happens when you shoot in the middle of summer. You run out of day because everybody's calling for their swimming pools. But for you, hopefully you're doing this for yourself and uh, you can just take your time. All right. Here's our impeller. So now we just need to take off our impeller. Uh, keep in mind, your impeller, the, the threads on this, uh, on the uh, screw there, the pilot screw, are reverse thread, the left hand thread. So don't go wrenching on it thinking it's the, uh, you know, it's a normal thread. You'll break. All right, so at this point, you got to pull this end cap off. Hopefully you can see that. And you need a, um, 
what you even call it? Impeller wrench. <laughs> and that allows you to simply unscrew this guy. Just like that. Okay. Now we're done with this guy. Um, so I got the, uh, the old pump apart. Now what we're about to do is uh, prep the new motor to go on to the new pump. And uh, just to clarify that a little bit, I want to show you folks what we're talking about here. This is a pump. This here is a motor. The motor turns electrical energy into mechanical energy. There you go. When it spins this impeller. So if we're being technical, the impeller is part of the motor, motor and the pump. Uh, this is this is the key to the whole system. Uh, so when we say motor and pump, we are talking about two separate things. Here's a little trick I use in the field. I keep the uh, styrofoam piece from the box. That way I can use it as a little bit of a motor stand. So when I'm working on it on the back, I'm not fighting with it rolling around on the ground. Seal looks like. So this is what keeps everything from leaking. You've got this little uh, graphite graphite piece here and a little ceramic piece here. And they come together just like that. The graphite sits still and the uh, uh, ceramic spins. Don't touch the ceramic with your skin. The oil on your skin um, will cause that to leak prematurely. Okay. So the way that we get the so we have to get the old seal out you want to compare the two that's what they look like side by side and then some guys like to seal these um, I've always found that they're pretty tight um, in the field what I do to, to seat these is you get a one inch um, piece of PVC plumbing and it'll fit right over the top. And that's that's how it ends up looking. Okay. Same thing, we get we get the old one out of there. A lot of times what I'll do is I'll use that ceramic piece kind of see it there I'll just set it in there and then I'll use this ceramic piece to press it down so make sure that it gets even contact and that it's in there it's in there flat but now our impeller is ready to go okay, next step from here we'll be able to put this uh, pump plate Place. Now you can flip it up on this. You won't have to worry about uh, damaging that. Got a few extra bolts I can work on. If you're using a drill uh, to do this, hold on to that hold at full speed because you don't want to uh, inadvertently strip your threads. Once you get all four, uh, all four bolts in there, then you can go ahead and work it down. But even then, you don't want to do it at full speed. Remember, you're going into uh, an insert that's threaded into a piece of plastic. Technically, I guess it's a piece of resin. Okay. Thread that on, and you'll get contact. And just keep keep threading until it's snug. Uh, you don't want to over tighten it. Uh, you also don't want to under tighten it. Uh, that has its own issues as well. I got this thing all wired up. You can see I've got this connected to a uh, standard um, extension cord. So I wanted to show you just one little thing. This comes from the factory with this little guy. Hard to hold that. With this guy in this 230 position. You'll also see a tag that looks like this. Um, if you intend on having this wired up uh, 230 leave that alone 
if you are wired up on 115, 110, 120, um, make sure this is rotated to that position there. Kind of hard to do that one handed. And then the last step that I have to do is install um, some new O rings and gaskets, put some lube on them, and then button the whole thing up. I'm not going to bore you with all that. Uh, it's pretty straightforward stuff, O-rings and, and whatnot, but uh, that's your uh, that's your motor swap, bench bench top motor swap. <laughs> you don't get to see that too often in, in uh, for pool guys because uh, pretty much everything we do is in the field. But uh, that's that.